turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. But everybody needs help in this last day. And what we need to do is the questions we can't answer, then leave them alone. Just enjoy the presence of God. Yes. Praise God. Enjoy the presence of God. Bless. And the verse says, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home. I could dismiss and y'all say, well, that was a good message. Because we going home to do what you said. Amen. If any man hunger, let him eat at home. That you come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. I want to set a few things in order. This morning. I want you to listen. There's, a, there's something I want to set in order with you today. I want you to know that life is too short to lose your soul. Amen. Now I confess to y'all that I don't know everything. I know some of you are disappointed. Some of you are probably going to say, man, I thought you weren't. No. And some of you probably said, I knew that. <laughs> you know, some probably said, I knew you weren't perfect. I knew you didn't know everything. In fact, I don't know much at all. Do y'all? I don't know much at all. The, 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 what I do know, you couldn't even feel the bottom of a thimble with compared, I guess, to some people. And the truth is, I'm just a common sense person. I, like, I believe in having common sense about things. Don't y'all? Don't be extreme one way or the other. Just have common sense. Amen. Amen. Have horse sense. The old people, you say, you know, that man don't even have sense. God gave a billy goat. That's pretty, pretty rough there. But God gave me sense enough to know that I needed a Savior. Amen. Amen. He gave me sense enough to know when things are done in order. There's not going to be any confusion. Amen. Things need to be in order. God is not the author of confusion today. He's not the author of trouble and confusion. If there's confusion in your life, it's not God doing it. He brings you peace and joy. I can retain my peace because I pray and I talk with the Lord. I have a desire again to pray. Amen. For if I find out I don't pray, I, I, I get worried, Sister Teresa. I want to pray. I got to talk to God. Don't, don't you? I got to read His Word. Amen. I want to read His Word. I want to understand His Word. We have this thing on the, on the computer that the Bible, the man reads the Bible through. And I can sit there part of the time and look at Robin and say exactly what the man said. Even though some of it I didn't memorize, yet when I hear the first of it, uh, it, it dawns on me and I can repeat a lot of it. Amen? Yes. Now we need to know the Word of God. So let's set the record straight with the devil today. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we might be saved except the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me, and if any man climb up any other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Well, yes. <laughs> that eliminates Muhammad as being the way. Amen. That eliminates High Krishna, Buddha. Amen. Amen. That, that fat little fat man that people got on the shelf, I ain't going to follow him nowhere. No, sir. He can't even go on a proper diet. <laughs> Amen. He sits on the shelf and looks like he gets fatter every time I see him. I don't know about you, but he's friendly looking. Everyone that I've ever seen being fat, they smiling real big. Amen. I'm glad my God don't sit on the shelf. Yes. My God inhabits eternity. Yes. Heaven's as strong, yes. earth is his footstool, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He yes. shooting forth the lightning and the thunders under his voice. Amen. I'm glad we serve God, Yahweh, God our Father, in the name of Jesus today. Yes. Praise yes. God. Yes. Je 
Jesus was the only Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. Yes. Amen. Nobody else can take away your sins. Amen. You're not going to accidentally stumble into heaven. You're not going to accidentally wake up one day and, what, I'm in heaven? No, sir. Everybody that gets to heaven, Brother Tony, knows where they're going. Everybody that gets to heaven knows that they were on their journey to heaven and they're there. But now you can accidentally stumble into hell. There are many church members today that's going to find out that they were wrong and wind up in hell. There's going to be some that come and knock on the door. Lord, open to us. Bless. And Jesus said, depart from me. I know you're not. There's going to be some that come and knock on the door. Lord, open. And he said, depart from me. I never knew you. Some of you don't know them because they backslid. Some of you never knew because they never had anything. You and I, amen, will not accidentally stumble in heaven. Bless. To get to heaven, we got to know where we're headed. Yes. And it's time to set things in order. First Peter, chapter number 1, verse number 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time wherein ye greatly rejoice so now for a season if need be ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation that the trial of your faith though it be much more precious than gold might be found in the praise and honor and glory of the appearing of Jesus Christ whom having not seen ye love yes. I've not seen him but I love him in whom though now see him not yet ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. And I believe that's right. And the verse that says in verse number four, reserved in heaven for you. Let's set the record straight. Do you have a reservation? Do you have a reservation in heaven? Well, I want to tell you for sure. If you don't have a reservation in heaven, let's turn to 2 Peter chapter number 2 and verse 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. If you don't have a reservation for heaven, God has reserved you a place in hell. You hear what I'm saying? A smart man will make reservations. A smart man, Merce, will call ahead to make sure that where he's going, he's got a place waiting. Have you ever been to the mountain just all lucky, nonchalantly, and we're going to go up there and get us a room, and we're going to enjoy, and you spend half the evening and night trying to find a room? Because you didn't call ahead? Anybody here? Yes. Oh, one, if we got one, my daughter. <laughs> that looks bad. Anybody else fail to get a reservation and you had trouble getting a room? Anybody? Just my daughter. Raise your hand again, baby. Well, it was a couple. Top five. Couple. <laughs> well, I have. I failed to, and, and I, I looked and looked, finally got one. Amen. But I want you to know something. My mama, as sweet as she is, she can, I cannot go to heaven on her salvation. I have got to have a reservation for myself. I have to make a phone call to heaven and I have to tell them I am sorry for giving me my sins and changed me and saved me and cleansed me. And he done that that night. He saved me. 
and he gave me a reservation that night. He said, your seat is reserved, Brother Tony. Amen. Your seat is reserved, son. Amen. Not like up in the mountains. Amen. You, you called ahead on this one. Amen. And our seat is reserved in heaven. Amen. For us who are kept by the power of God unto salvation. Yeah. Amen. We have a reservation. But my mama won't get me in on her salvation. My daddy could never help me. Amen. My preacher, my pastor, he couldn't get me a reservation. I had to do the talking myself. I had to do the calling myself. When I take Seth to a restaurant, he wants me to order for him. He don't like talking to him. He's right there with me. I said, order. He said, no. And I give me two double cheeseburgers, plain. You have to talk for yourself. I cannot pray you into heaven. Mama can't pray you into heaven. I don't care what anybody says. Mama can't pray anybody into heaven. She can only pray for mercy that God will show you what you need. And it's up to you to make a reservation. My dad's credentials won't get me far. Amen. The only way, Robert, is I've got to be born again, son. I've got to be changed. And thank God 41 years ago, the Lord changed me, saved my soul from hell, and he said, I'm going to put your name in heaven in the Lamb Book of Life. And he put my name down in heaven, and I have a reservation. I have a dinner ticket, if you will. I have a dinner ticket, amen, to the marriage supper of the Lamb. I have been invited, and I received my invitation gladly, and I'm on my way. And I'm not going to accidentally wake up one morning and say, why am I here? No, sir. I'm going to know where I'm going. you got to know your name is reserved in heaven. You need to know today, amen, don't wait till tomorrow. Too many people have waited in this church till tomorrow, and tomorrow never came for them. Amen. And they lost their soul, amen. You gotta call ahead. You gotta get your reservation. Yes, it's not like having to sleep in your car because you got there too late. You're not gonna be sleeping if you miss your reservation to heaven. It's not like, well, if I miss heaven, I miss it all. You don't miss it all. You miss the very worst thing that a man or woman could ever face. Many church people are going to be surprised at hell, I'm telling you. Amen. A lot of church people, a lot of preachers, a lot of preachers are going to be surprised. Amen. They're going to think, well, I've done all this, but they did not cleanse themselves. We as preachers got to cleanse our hearts and minds and purify our own lives and live sanctified. i got to live in a way that I can say I've tried and done my best. I don't need any condemnation in my life. It's not a shame. The things that I do, I play a little pool with Dean at, at his house, and I lose a lot. I don't whine about it. I, I, no, man, how did I miss that shot? It ain't nothing. Those things don't affect me. Matthew, I lost the singing contest. It didn't make me feel bad because look who I lost to. Wow, second place to Teddy Bullard. I'll take that spot any time. Hey Amen. Wouldn't y'all take second place to, to Ralph Baxley in heaven and be right behind Brother Ralph, you know? I, I'd take that spot, wouldn't you? Hey Amen, but I want you to know something. I may not be the biggest in heaven, but I'm going to be in the number system I'm this. I'm going to be in that number over yonder where all the saints are. I'm going to be in that congregation somewhere. And my little old hand going to be praising God and shouting the victory because I made a reservation. Amen. And I plan to keep my reservation. And I plan to make it in the glory. Yes. Many people will be surprised. Many preachers surprised in hell. Yeah. There's this little boy one time and, and there was a preacher conference and he was the son of one of the preachers. And I think there's about 36 or 40 preachers there. And they went outside and they had a barrel. It was real cold and they had a fire in a barrel and they all standing around the barrel talking. 
and the preachers were packed around the barrel and, so, and it was so cold and the little boy he, he tried to get in he cut and went all around looking to get through them giant legs and, and finally he pushed and squirmed through and got to the barrel and one preacher said son you know how hell's going to be and the little boy said yeah probably like this preacher going to be so many preachers you can't get one <laughs> ain't that horrible oh Lord God so many preachers are going to be there I don't want to be there oh I want to keep my reservation what about what Robert spoke the other night about the five foolish virgins what did they do oh they woke and they never got any oil they didn't get the Holy Ghost they had a lamp God gave them a lamp when they got saved and that lamp will shine. You can burn your wick as long as the wick is there. And you keep turning up and it burn out, you turn it up. But if there's no oil in there, the wick will finally burn out. And it did. And they looked around and knocked on the door. Let us in, Lord, let us in. Depart from me. I know you're not. A sad thing. God said in his word, my spirit shall not always strive with man, but that he also is flesh, didn't he? Huh? Proverbs chapter 1, it said, because I've called and you refused. I've stretched my hand out, no man regarded. I also will laugh at your calamity, and I'm going to mock when your fear comes. When your fear comes, the desolation and your destruction comes as a whirlwind. Then will they call upon me, and I will not hear them. Amen. Don't wait too late. Don't try, don't wait and say, I'm going to get a reservation. I'm going to get saved. I'm going to get saved one day, preacher. I've had people tell me, I'm going to get saved later on. And later on never came because they died. He said, I'll come later, Lord. Don't put it off. Amen. Don't procrastinate today. Amen. Don't say, I'll come when I have convenient time. There will not be convenient season for you. What about the ladies that got killed versus Conley? Way over in Sephora Lane, too. They're way over on their lane. Hey, man, just riding along the right speed. A man on the other side. Something happened. And he went all the way across the four lanes and hit him head on and killed him. Y'all remember that? Sad. It'll hit you when you least expect it. If you don't have reservation for heaven. God said he has reserved the unjust unto the day of judgment ready to be punished. There is a reservation. You're in a group today called a multitude, a multitude in the valley of decision. You're trying to decide which way to go and what to do. Well, all you got to do to go to hell is don't decide. Don't decide. Don't choose today. Just wait a little while longer. Amen. Because God has got a place reserved. Amen. In torment for you. Amen. You tarry too long in sin. Amen. Be sure your sin will find you out. Amen. You wait a little longer in sin and you will die in sin. Was it not Pharaoh when Moses came back? Amen. And, and had frogs everywhere. Frogs in the knitting dough. Frogs in the meal. Frogs everywhere. And Pharaoh told Moses that night said, I want you to, we'll let you go and worship if you'll get rid of the frogs. And Moses said, when do you want me to get rid of the frogs? And Pharaoh said, tomorrow. Pharaoh said, get rid of them tomorrow. Why didn't Pharaoh say get rid of them right now? Huh? Get rid of the frog right now. He said, get rid of them tomorrow. So he had to stay with the frogs all night long. One more night with the frogs changed his mind. For the next day, Moses got rid of the frog, but Pharaoh's heart was hardened again. Amen. His heart was hardened again. I want you to know something. One more night with sin, and your heart will get harder. 
one more night with the frogs and the devil and your heart is going to get more corrupt and more vile. After a while, you're going to be like that crowd of people that God told Jeremiah he was praying and crying for the people. And God said, don't pray for this people for their good. I have rejected and I have refused them, so don't pray for them. Was it not Samuel when he was praying for Saul? Oh, and, and begging God for mercy on Saul. And God said, why weep you and break my heart? I rejected Saul. Don't pray for him anymore. There's coming a time when God's going to say, I put them on the reserve list. We can call and get a reservation or we can let God appoint us one. You hear what I'm saying? We can call and get a reservation with the Lord or we can just let God appoint us a reservation. And that reservation is to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. Hell is busting at the seams right now. Hell is busting at the seams. Have y'all heard about the volcanoes that are erupting all around the world now everywhere? Have you heard about the earthquakes happening every day somewhere? Uh, 4.5, we had one, one in, in, in South Carolina, weren't it? Two in South Carolina. They're getting closer and closer. Hell is enlarging itself without measure. The Bible said hell is opening its mouth to receive them at their coming. Where do you think the volcanoes and, and all those things are coming from? Where do you think that molten fire come from out of that volcano? This molten rock. It's, it's being pushed out because hell is enlarging itself. Because their, their pride and their pomp and their ignorance and their ungodliness, amen, is falling into it. And therefore hell is busting at the seams today. It's enlarging itself today. Amen, I'm so glad today. I called over yonder. I said, Lord, save me. I need you. And he saved my soul and gave me a reservation. Amen, I've got a reservation in heaven. Amen, I'm glad I'm not like the ones that said, I'm just going to wait and let God appoint me one. Amen. He has appointed one for the weak and for the ungodly and to be re reserved in the judgment and punishment of the wicked. Amen. I don't want to go there. Hell is enlarging itself. Anybody ever been burned? Anybody ever will any? You've been burned. I mean, third degree. Anybody? You have what about y'all? Ricky, I know you have all the work you do. Been burned. Third degree. That was the most painful thing I ever felt. I grabbed a chain one time. A neighbor had a dog in the house on a chain, in a little dog house on a chain, and the light caught on fire. Uh, busted, caught with everything on fire, and electricity was running through that chain. Got it so uh, when I grabbed it, I felt my hand melt around it. My mama remembers that, don't you? Hey, man, and, and, and it was just, boy, right across there, it was cooked to the bone. This white, dead flesh. And I went to the doctor, they gave me a little something for pain. And, and I was 17, I believe. And I was pretty tough. But that thing made me cry. It hurt so bad. With severe pain. You know how it feels to burn. Just multiply that 10,000 times over. And it's burning not just your hand or where you were burned, but your heart and your soul literally burning with fire. Amen. And cannot get any relief. Amen. Sit gnawing your tongue for pain. The Bible said they'll gnaw their tongues for pain. Amen. And let me know you got a tongue down there. It, it said the weeping and gnashing of teeth. You ever heard any, anybody with such pain that are gritting their teeth together? Well, that's what it's going to be in hell. Outer darkness. Amen. Just falling and falling and turning and falling. Amen. It screams everywhere. Everybody's screaming. That's hell. Oh, yeah. But my preacher said that this is just a myth when you can believe what you want. Because those volcanoes are real. They're spewing out molten rock, amen, just by the billions of 
gallons, no doubt, everywhere. Spewing that why because heaven's enlarging itself. And Jesus said, where there's outer darkness, for the worm dies not, the soul does not die, and the fire is never quenched. The fire will not say, that's enough, I've had enough. It will forever burn. And there is a reservation there for you with your name on it. If you do not call ahead and say, Lord, I want to go to heaven. I want a reservation today. That's going to be a horrible thing. Horrible. Come to the piano, Lord. Horrible. Horrible thing. Robin, can you sing, please don't leave the ark of safety? As she sings a song this morning. And we need to reason together now. It says, come now and let us reason together, say it. The Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be as white as snow. I will tell you the truth. I've tried a lot of drugs, not as many as some of, some of you, but I've tried the extreme ones. I've tried the extreme acid, some of the worst acid I've ever seen, like to never come back from that trip. They call it Black Sabbath and Black Devil Acid. You remember that, Teddy? It's a little black peel, just smaller than a baby aspirin. Didn't look like much. But it, boy, drove us insane almost. I've tried all that. And when I came from it, I said, I ain't never going to do that again. I'm like, you know. Again. I tried that mess, I tried alcohol, drinking all night long, partying, and the next day I oh, have a headache, and that night you go, you know, maybe if I drink another beer or something, it'll take the headache, but it don't work. Those things did not satisfy me. That very night I went to this altar, and I knelt right here, right here. And I prayed and I cried. I heard the story that Jesus loved me. I didn't hear fancy, fancy preaching, fancy teaching. I didn't call a talk show host and try to argue with him about myself. I just heard that man tell how Jesus died for me because he loved me. Even though I was a vile sinner, he still loved me. And it broke my heart. Somebody would love somebody like me. And it broke my heart to the point I prayed right here. 30, 40 minutes, baby. Cried like a baby. I cried, I'm so sorry, Lord, for the way that I've done you. And I cried and I prayed and I cried and prayed. After about 30 minutes, my uncle spoke the words in my ear. He said, Son, Jesus loves you. And when he said that, it hurt me worse. Think that Jesus loved me. And I cried as hard as I could cry. And all of a sudden, oh God, I'm sorry, and I cried. And all of a sudden, God reached in me. I felt God reach inside of me and pull all my sins out. And when he took all my sins out of me, I was amazed. I never felt like that in my life. I was clean and pure inside. And all the sin gone. And you know, I started, I raised my hand and started praising God as hard as I could. Still crying, but in a different way. Thank you, Jesus. I never felt this before. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And right over here, I think Sister Johnson was against the rail. Sister Emma was. And I went to him and hugged him. Praise God. Hallelujah. I was happy. I was hugging everybody. And I walked outside that night and it wasn't lit up then like it is now. But I looked at the road and I looked at the trees and everything looked like it had been varnished. It was sparkling. Everything was sparkling. I, I, I was looking like this. Everything was lit up. I was looking through it. Wonder what a little baby sees when they first born, and every eye they go. I guess they're scared, aren't they? Right? But they saw everything, and I saw everything for the first time, the way the Lord wanted me to see it, and God saved me. And you know what? He put my name in heaven, and He gave me a reservation. I got a number up yonder. Give me a song.
know the Bible say what a name, what a number on it, and a name. He give me a new song. I got a reservation. And I'm gonna hold on to it. Cause my life is getting shorter and shorter. My wife is getting shorter. No, she done. My life is getting shorter and shorter.
find your soul. Listen, you find your soul.